So around two weeks ago, I got a very interesting comment on one of my videos on my channel. And I tried to answer that comment to the best of my abilities, but the response that I got from that person actually intrigued me to create a whole video on this. And my thought process was, if I'm sharing this information with them, maybe there are other people in my community that have questions similar to the ones that this person has asked. And maybe if I create a video detailing kind of my opinion on this, issue, maybe they could learn a thing or two about how to approach this problem as well as what my stance on that is. So before we continue any further, let's actually take a look at what the comment was, what I replied to that and what the subsequent reply to that. So two weeks ago, somebody by the name of new programmer 155, thank you for watching my videos and also commenting, um, asked me a question saying that they are a second year student, I believe for computer science, um, and they are going in the MERN stack. So what does MERN mean? Well, MERN basically refers to a web development stack, which stands for MongoDB as the database, Express as the actual web server, React as the front end framework to build their UIs, and then Node.js as the actual JavaScript runtime that they are using to service their applications. And what they were basically saying that they know a lot about MERN, um, they know a thing or two about React Native, which is a framework similar to Flutter, which is used for building a mobile applications, um, and then a bunch of things about Web3 decentralized blockchain dApps. So that's a whole mouthful, but the only thing that I'm going to clarify here is that if you don't understand what a dApp is, it basically means a decentralized app. And you can think of dApps in the most simplest of manners as applications that run on Web3 based technology. So for example, if I have an application that the user can upload files to and I store these files on the IPFS, which is the interplanetary file system, um, and this is something that is in the realm of Web3 or decentralized. Um, applications, then my app could be considered a DAP. And they were also telling me that they had solved over 300 data structure algorithm problems. So would it be good for them to learn Flutter now? And my answer to this was something that I feel everybody should take to heart if they want to become good engineers and have hopefully a fruitful career in software engineering. And that is to look at yourself and think of yourself as, yes, I'm a software engineer, but I'm not tied to a particular framework. What I'm good at is one doing research and two problem solving. If somebody comes to me with a specific problem, let's just say, hey, I want to build a mobile app, then I have the intuition within me and the knowledge within me. And if I don't have the knowledge within me, then I can go and research different things to gain that knowledge and then build the solution that can help me solve the problem that somebody came to me with or a problem that I kind of saw in the real world. So that's how you should look at yourself or perceive yourself as an engineer. I think really good software engineers are people that don't niche themselves down onto working onto particular frameworks or things like that, but they are individuals that are good at problem solving, good at deciphering important bits of information from a lot of information, and then how to take this information and then use it in the context of the problem that they are trying to solve. So I basically said a crude version of this to them, and then they replied saying, thank you, so welcome for that. And then they continued saying that what they are having an issue with is the fact they are passionate about a lot of different things. So they like to do web development from what I can understand. They also do Java based web development, which I think is the Spring Boot framework. They like Web3, AI, and a whole bunch of other things. And they are kind of confused as to what's the field they should pursue. So if they have so many interests, what's the field that they should go in? Well, here my answer to that would be that keep in mind the actual initial answer that I've given you, which is that you need to become good at problem solving. And the way you become good at problem solving is by one, learning about different things, trying to implement solutions to them, and then doing all of these different exercises that you might encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, such as following tutorials, solving data structure-based problems, solving algorithm problems, uh, studying about computer science, the theory behind it, things like that. But what if, you also want to get a job in the actual field of software engineering. Well, for that, you need to be a little more than just a problem solver. You also need to be an expert in one particular thing. And the reason I'm saying you need to be an expert and niche down in one particular thing is because that's the thing that's going to be the strong point or the strong skill set that you're going to have that's going to allow you to get your foot into the field. 
Once you are in the software engineering field, then you're going to get exposed to a lot of different things and you're going to pick up a lot of different skills and then you're just going to be continuing to increase your level as a software engineer, gather new skills, new expertise, and hopefully rise amongst the ranks that different software engineers have. But to get started, and I understand that a lot of us might have a lot of different passions and we might want to learn everything that's under the sky, my best advice to you would be to pick something that you are truly passionate about or if you're not passionate about at least you find yourself enjoying doing so if you take an example of me. I really like building mobile applications. I publish mobile applications for myself and for clients on the App Store, iOS App Store, as well as Google Play Store. So I find the process of creating mobile apps, adding functionality to them, um, performing different kind of user case studies on them, trying to fix bugs in them, and the whole process of just app development, very oh. fruitful and very enjoyable. So I decided to kind of niche down on that and then become an expert at Flutter. And that kind of allowed me to get my foot in the door when it comes to actually securing oh. a job. Now, does that mean that I do not know Python? Well, I do know Python. Does that mean I don't know web development? Yes, I do know web development. I know a bunch thing or two about how to build websites with React, with Next.js, and a whole bunch of other things like that. But what my core expertise are for now is how can I build solid mobile applications and then publish them and service a whole bunch of different users. So that's what I want you to focus on as well. I want you to not think of yourself as, hey, if I'm going to learn Flutter, then I'm going to be somebody that's just going to be a Flutter developer for the rest of my life. What you need to do, and sorry if I'm rambling and if it doesn't make sense, what you need to do is basically do two things. The first is that you need to kind of focus on your whole career as a software engineer and think of that as somebody who's a problem solver. And then throughout your career, try to pick up skills and expertise that can help you become a better problem solver. And at the highest level of software engineering, you are going to be amazed to know that a lot of programmers don't write codes. Then it becomes more of a consulting type job or a job where you take a look at the code that other people are writing and then offer suggestions on that and approve those changes so that that code can be deployed to production and service a whole bunch of users. So you're the final gatekeeper allowing another developer to push their code to production. So that's what happens at the highest level of programming. And those type of people are people that have spent years honing their craft, trying to understand what real software engineering is actually about and then understand it. But at a very beginner level, I also understand that to get a job, you need to be a master at a particular thing. So if you feel like, as you've alluded to before, that you are somebody that knows a lot about web development, then maybe for you, a good strategy would be to continue doing your data structures and algorithm problems because let's face it, those are integral to your interview process and integral to becoming a good software developer. And then once you've done those, then also focus on trying to become an expert in one of the frameworks that you like. So if you want to use more, then become an expert in that. And more particularly, then become an expert on how the Node.js runtime works, what are the limitations, the pros and cons, and all of the ecosystem that surrounds the React framework. What does Express do? What are the limitations of Express? What are the different contexts in which the Express server can be used? And then also, what are the plus points, the benefits, the pros and cons, everything when it comes to NoSQL databases such as MongoDB? And then try to build some projects using this actual stack build a portfolio, maybe host your stuff on GitHub, or you can create your own website. And then now you can say that, okay, even though at a very high level, I need to be somebody that's a problem solver. I'm also somebody that's skilled enough in modern development that I can now apply for jobs that are looking for modern developers specifically. And this is what I'd recommend anybody who's trying to get their foot in the door to do. So that's pretty much what my answer to this actual comment would be. If you guys enjoyed the video that I created today and you guys have questions of your own, then feel free to leave them down in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. And if something really piques my interest, then I'll try to create a video on that to maybe give a more detailed answer. But as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep going, and don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to my channel. Take care. Bye-bye.